Welcome back. Today's video is about Newtonian reflectors. They are by far the best bang for the buck in budget telescopes and there are ways to improve your visual and imaging experience with these instruments. So without further ado, here are 10 ways to improve a Newtonian reflector. One great improvement is replacing the stock focuser. If you have the standard rack and pinion style that's common, they have a tendency to sink under the weight of a camera, they're sloppy, and you'll notice they're shimmed. For under $100 you could upgrade to a Crayford style. For more money you could purchase a dual speed Crayford. But in any event, they're really smooth. You'll find that focusing is a whole lot easier. They're rigid and they're really worth the money. If you have a hard time with your finder scope, you may consider upgrading it. There are many different styles out there from red dots to crosshairs, magnified and non-magnified versions. I like the magnified 9x50s. I'll give you a reason why. If you were looking for the Crab Nebula for the very first time, it might be a little difficult to find without magnification. You could use a program like Stellarium and you can see some of the fainter stars that your eyes can't pick up and it'll help you map out the sky better and be able to more easily locate the object you're looking for. Whatever your type of telescope, the mounting is really important. If you don't have tube rings and a dovetail, you should consider upgrading to that as all your better mounts will carry the dovetail rail. Here's my Mead Lightbridge Mini 130. It came with a four inch dovetail attached directly to the scope. That's all fine and good for the Dobsonian mount, but in order to mount that to a CG4 or that sort of thing, I had to take the old rail off, fill in the holes, and then use tube rings and a longer dovetail. You may also have a stock dovetail that's not long enough. When you put a camera on a telescope, you may be required to have a longer dovetail in order to balance the telescope properly on the mount. A fourth upgrade to consider is a center dot on your primary mirror. If your stock mirror did not come with a center dot, just get a notebook protector, locate the center of the mirror and place it there. This will make collimation so much easier. I can't overemphasize that. Another thing that will help you a lot with collimation is collimation knobs. If you go to bobsknobs.com, you can find screw type knobs that can easily retrofit your current telescope. They have guides to help you find what you need. And they're so much better than toying around with an Allen wrench in the dark. This is a really good upgrade and something you should consider. They also have better tension on the springs. It's gonna make collimation a dream. If it hasn't already, do will eventually sneak up on you and ruin your night. You can buy heater straps and controllers like this AstroZap model, which is really well trusted, really cheap, and eliminate the headache altogether. A cooling fan is also essential, especially in large telescopes, say eight inches or greater. Warm air rises from the mirror and causes tube currents. That also degrades the wave front. If different parts of the mirror acclimatize at different rates, you'll get spherical aberration. That's generally the cause for it. And these can be powered with small lithium ion batteries. You can buy one from a computer store. The main thing is that it doesn't cause any vibration within the scope. That's something you're gonna to have to do through trial and error. Or you can buy a trusted brand that's specifically for astrophotography. Have you heard of Bader Turbo Film? 12 micron in thickness, has a light transmission of 95% at 633 nanometers. It reduces tube currents, seals out dust and pollen. It's used in observatory windows and it comes in a roll size of 120 centimeters by 51, which is approximately 50 inches by 20. This is $47 at the time of this video from High Point Scientific and it's totally awesome to cover your telescope optics with. A consideration most people don't make is upgrading their spider. Our fans of Newtonians are usually fans of diffraction spikes in their images. And those are the sharp points coming off of stars that are caused by the 
veins of the spider. But did you know that the spider's shape and amount of prongs is in direct correlation to the amount of spikes and the shape of the spikes coming off of those stars? So if you want to change the images that you produce with your telescope, you might consider upgrading your spider. You may have noticed that the edges of your stars are rolled up have kind of like a comet tail that's known as coma and in a Newtonian reflector you have a parabolic mirror and the edges of that mirror are curved and that's exactly why the image is made that way so to correct for this you would use a coma corrector or field flattener for the smaller Newtonians I find the Bader multi-purpose coma corrector MPCC Mark III to be really good if you go to the websites that have this product, you'll see in the description that it matches telescope apertures of that size. But it's an absolute must for imaging unless you plan on cropping the center of your images. The stars at the corners will roll up. That's just the nature of a parabolic mirror. So that concludes my 10 ways to improve a Newtonian reflector. There's probably many more out there and you're welcome to leave it in the comments. I hope that this information was useful to somebody. And I hope that if you choose to upgrade something, it greatly benefits you. As always, clear skies.